What's up, everybody? So today we are reacting to Battlefield 6. Maybe that's what it's called. We don't know. Um, during the E3 presentation that they had not a few days ago, um, I reacted to it live on my Twitch channel. They did a little bit about the future of Battlefield. They also did a little bit about future of Dark Dragon Age around the same time. Um, and they kind of got meshed together. So I wanted to kind of go over what I think the future of Battlefield is by looking at this teaser with you and going over some of the tech demos and what it could possibly be. Uh, but before we get started, I want to give a huge shout out to all my members. You guys are amazing. If it wasn't for you guys, I wouldn't be making videos every single day. So guys, thank you, thank you, thank you so much. Really, really do appreciate your help. Um, if you're a member and you're not part of Discord yet, link down below, go and join because you'll be part of a special chat. And if you're not a member and you fancy a bit of a chinwag anyway, go and join the Discord card down there you'll find uh, the original clip for this video it's by ign uh, they clipped it out of the live part of um, the presentation you also find all my socials like instagram twitter discord website merch and my twitch where i stream mondays wednesdays and fridays and also some other times depending on if there's like presentations like the c3 one so let me pull this up okay uh where are we now here it is and let me just let me just pull to this like a beautiful greg miller right there let me pull to the side. So basically, this is this is a little bit different to my usual reactions, right? They 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 put on a little tiny tech demo of what the future technology will be in the franchise of Battlefield, and um, it also says the franchise of Dragon Age. But I think primarily a lot of this is Battlefield. So obviously, military games is something that I really love on this channel. I haven't played many Battlefield games, but I am a huge fan of them. I ex I plan on playing through all of them very soon. Um, so I want to go over this. I want to give my speculation and my thought. Um, I For a little bit of accreditation, obviously, I play games all the time, but I also going, I am going to school for computer science and a minor in game design. So when I see these things, I, I'm going to try and use my, my, um, my skills that I've learned from school to kind of figure out what it might be. Um, so let, let's, I'll shut up now. I'll shut up. Let, let, let's have a look. Let's have a look. Now, that's a lot to look forward to, but there's more. Here to tell us about the future of gaming is EA's Chief Studio Officer, Laura Miele. Thanks, Greg, and thanks, Lamar. Welcome to the EA Sports family. There are great things to come from EA Sports for all of you, and that's just the beginning. As you've seen throughout the show today, our electronic artists are working hard to bring you more of the games that you want to play. Games like Star Wars Squadrons, Apex Legends, and Command and & Conquer. These games all exist because of you. Your voices are heard and we are acting on your feedback. Now we've talked a lot about all the exciting games you'll be playing this year, but our studios are working even further out, creating new experiences, new stories, new gameplay, all enabled by new console technology. And we're so excited about what's to come, we don't want to wait until next June to share what the teams are working on. So, until next June to share what the teams are working on. We already know that, obviously, this is going to be, you know, there's a little bit of Dragon Age in there, and that's not something that I usually put on this channel, anything, like, fantasy-esque. Um, but they're going to, they've already announced that. So, what I'm presuming is that they're talking about the new Battlefield. We're expected that this Battlefield comes out next year. Um, so, this is, this is exactly what she's chatting on about right now. Okay, so let, let's break this down bit by bit. Okay. So... If you if you kind of put your put your perspective onto military games now, especially especially Battlefield and like how Battlefield works, how the gameplay works, uh, you know when you see smoke like this, you, you're automatically thinking of you know grenades and smoke grenades and and all these different types of equipment that form dust that form smoke. And what they're trying to to show here is that not only can they um, animate dust and smoke in this proportion but if you notice this object sliding from underneath it is showing that the that it reacts in real time to that object being passed through it and that's important because um, a lot of military games right now if you throw a smoke grenade you just run through it nothing really happens but in real life you get a trail of smoke a little bit that follows you you know you, you're pulling smoke along with the air with you so it's interesting to see that they're actually thinking about uh, that level of detail in the future so if you look at this a little bit you could you could barely see it. it's a very very small clip, um, but that's exactly what it's showing, and I think it's showing a little bit here as well with this level of destruction. Let's just watch this quickly. Oh wait, let's Generation. go back. So again, you see in here, you see in all these different bits. Destruction is something that happens a lot in battlefield games um, of of different you know buildings and stuff, especially if you hit them with tanks and stuff. So obviously they want to keep 
upgrading that capability of, of complete destruction of, of the, the battlefield. So if you look here, all the different parts are moving independently. If I, I remember Battlefield 1, um, when they broke, like they, they explained that the, the, the buildings could be broke up, but when they actually broke up, they broke up into like blocks and it didn't look as good as you'd like it to. So I think this is what th basically they're showing here is it's different sizes, it's different pieces to the actual building that are being broken. There's also smoke involved. Um, it says at the bottom here, below the bar, it says work in progress, so this is all still new. I don't know if it's... It's not doing anything to the people down here. These are all static people. Um, it's just concentrating on this right now. Uh, but yeah, you can see there's more smoke on the top here, and then there's smoke on the bottom when the rubble hits the ground. So they're, they're obviously really thinking in clear detail on what they're going to do with these buildings when they get um, destroyed, which is important because that level of detail is what makes the game realistic at the end of the day. Generation shifts are an opportunity to push beyond the boundaries of gaming as we know it today. And this time is... Okay, that's ridiculous how good that is. Um, again, you're not going to see this on a giant battlefield with, you know, 50 v 50 or anything like that. But what you will see this is in, in is the cutscenes and the story mode you will see this level of detail um whether you will only see this in cutscenes or whether you'll actually see it in gameplay we're yet to understand because obviously the new consoles are coming out they're going to be um they're going to be way more powerful let's be honest so will we see this type in gameplay i'm 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 more inclined to say no because they don't need that much detail that close up unless they're doing like portrait shots this close of an enemy or, or of the person you're playing they're not going to need this level of detail so i'm not sure whether we've put this much effort in unless it was just a cut scene basically but it's cool to see how amazing look how good this is to push beyond the boundaries of gaming as we know it today and this time is no different our studios are taking their crazy ambitious ideas and making them real criterion is known for how their game all right so we've got a little bit of the racing cars here not too bothered. A little bit of Dragon Age coming up here. And then, okay, here's where we get into a little bit more Battlefield. Okay. Ice sets the bar for excellence. Parachute Regiment, look at that. It's a little bit bright of a beret, that. It's maroon, the Para Regiment. Um, so this was Bad Company 2 back in 2010. So this is a real, this is a 10-year-old game. It still looks pretty cool. An audio and visual presentation. Four, four. I'll tell you what, though, guys. Um, let's just go back a tiny bit. Five seconds is way too much. Um, but Battlefield 1, when that came Visual out, presentation. that game was way ahead of its time, Battlefield 1, let's be honest, amazing. It says current gen, it doesn't show Battlefield 5, we know that it didn't do as well as they'd like, so it's very intriguing that they didn't bother saying that was current gen. We are creating epic battles at a scale and fidelity unlike anything you've experienced before. Okay, so, you know, big battles, this is exactly what we want, especially during, um, you know, the story mode, because you're going to have a lot of AI in one battle. Um, this is really cool, you know, um, most, most, most games have them giant battles, and obviously consoles are restricted by the amount of moving parts they can have on a screen at one point before it starts, you know, dropping frames, etc., uh, losing um, resolution. So, you know, have seen this many people on the battlefield doing Fear stuff creating. independently. You know, they're all doing different things independently. It doesn't look like people are falling to the ground in the same shape. You get that a lot if you notice when you're playing video games. When someone dies, they die in the same kind of manner all the time. Um, they're starting to move away from that a little bit with, uh, with like, ragdoll physics. But even ragdoll physics are not necessarily realistic. So, um, it's nice to see, you know... People moving in different directions. They're not all moving the same type of way. Like I can't, I can't really see any of these characters who are in exactly the same position doing exactly the same thing. Maybe these two right here, but that might be just a coincidence. Battles at a Let's have a look here. Scale and fidelity, unlike anything. Yeah, it's so brief. I would have liked to have seen more of this. We are creating epic battles at a scale and fidelity. So this guy in the background here, falling over. Watch. Scale and fidelity. Right here, he fell down very differently than the rest of them that I've seen so far. Unlike anything. So yeah, these big battles are something that I really want to see. I want to see, um, I want to see things that are unique every time you you see if you die and then you get respawned again. I don't want to see the same people die in the same way every single time. I want it to be very unique and 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 that that way of being unique makes it feel real. Uh, this is why games like The Last of Us do so well is because. 
you always find something new in the game and it's different the way, you know, you might find something you didn't expect before and the characters react to that different thing you found. And that gives it that little bit more character, that little bit more um, realism in the game. And it feels natural to do something and the characters react to it. So if you, if you uh, I don't know, storm in a building, let's say, and it happens every time you die, it happens the same time everywhere. This, this, I've been playing re through the, uh, the old Call of Duty games recently, and you know, if I die, I before you after three or four deaths in the same area, you start to understand exactly when that enemy is going to come out, exactly what they're going to do, when they're going to do it, what they're going to throw. Um, looking at you, World at War with all them grenades. So it's nice to know that maybe when you storm a room or when you storm a compound or if you if you jump over a trench, it might not necessarily be the same thing every time, and that's what we want. We don't want to. Be able to finish a game through learning patterns. We want to finish a game by learning how to be skillful at the game. Okay, um, so let's move on. Look, great graphics. This is just show. This here is just showing the graphics. Um, I'm hoping mostly here is motion capture for story mode. Unlike any, but this could also be just generic um, characters in multiplayer. And if it is, and it has this level of detail with the paws and stubble and. The glistening of the eyes. This and look at these wrinkles on the on the brow here. They've really gone and pushed the technology as far as it, as it looks like it can do um, to make it look as realistic as possible. And I'm not sure how it, how they're actually doing this. Whether it's actual um, photographs being put on 3D models or what. It looks like. So let me just go back a tiny bit. It looks like this is a 3D model they've they've got of a person, and they're pushing the picture on it. But so usually you can get like a model, say like a, a ball, and then you can put a skin of a soccer ball on top of that or a football, wherever country you're in, and it'll look like a football, but it's just a, a round object with a skin on top. That's how they do most things. Now, it looks like in doing this, but this model is already incredibly detailed that it's making the picture that's being put on top of it look even more detailed. Look at all the tiny eyelashes, still got them creases in the brow. Uh, looks like there's a little bit of stubble there, but maybe the light you can't really see. It's probably got the pause as well. Very, very impressive. Like anything you've experienced. Look at that. And the way they move, that's got to be motion capture. And different little bits of unique, like, things that are unique on, on a character's face. You, you know, not everyone's, like, you know, Barbie doll skin. It's obviously, it's got a few pimples and stuff, and that's, that's cool. That's cool that they've got that in there. Before. Yep. So, <laughs> one thing that's kind of funny is that... Getting people to smile is incredibly difficult with 3D animation. Um, I, I've not touched any of 3D animation, but I know it's incredibly difficult. Looking at you, uh, Man of Steel, uh, with that mustache and when they had to redo it, it's hard to do unless you've got motion capture. So looking like, you know, if you move one tiny muscle in the face, it moves everything else. So it looks like they're really understanding that and they're really, they're really pushing the boundaries of that, which is very impressive. At Motive, we are working on a highly ambitious and innovative new game that puts the power and creativity... Okay, yeah, so the rest of this is just... This is a different game. Um, and then she just chats for a bit. Okay, so um, let me pull out, let me pull that off and let me let me uh, get rid of that for a second. So, again, they're, they're just teasing the fact that they are working on a battlefield. They are working on Battlefield 6 or whatever they're going to call it. Um, and they're obviously going to really push the boundary. Now, they're taking... What is it now? Two years? They're gonna have, or three years? It would have been when by the time this one comes out at the end of next year. Um, so they're really pushing the boundary of what they're gonna be able to be capable of, and I'm really hoping they just utilize as much technology as possible with making things unique and making each um, individual model of a person react differently every time. I think that's very important, um, and it looks like they are doing with the way people are dying and stuff like that. So you know, this this could be this could be good, but even if the graphics are good and the way the game plays is good, uh, there needs to be good content. There needs to be replayability. There needs to be a bunch of other hosts in there to make the game work and to make it cohesive and have all these different elements blend together to make a good game. They can't just be like, play this game because it's got good graphics um, because that's just not how it works. You need a good story in story mode. You need replayability in multiplayer that's actually fun. Um, you, you progress. You actually you, you build up with your skill. That's all really important. You need obviously you need good graphics along with with uh, good gameplay. Um, there's a bunch of different good good audio. They didn't say anything about audio in this part, 
Um, so all these things really need to work together and blend together to make a really good game. So I hope they're not just, you know, got tunnel vision on making the game look good. I hope they look back on Battlefield 5 and, and um, take away the things that they, they didn't work out so well for them. And then also look at Battlefield 1 and Battlefield 4 and Battlefield 3 and really look at what made them games good and utilizing that knowledge and putting it into Battlefield 6. This is all we know about Battlefield 6 right now. It's just this little bit of a teaser that they are working on it. Uh, it doesn't look like they are far in development, to be honest with you. Um, for all we know, it could be, it's definitely in way pre-alpha. So for all we know that they haven't even, you know, started thinking about putting weapons in or etc. It looks like they're all working on character animations and um, um, real-time destruction objects and, and maybe visual smoke and, and stuff like that. So... I want to hear more next year about, um, you know, what era the game is in. Personally, I would like them to go back to modern battles rather than World War One and World War Two. I want to see some modern gameplay, nothing futuristic. I want to see current weapons and current soldiers being being used. Um, I also want to see them do a really good cohesive story. I'm, I'm, I liked what they did with Battlefield 1 where it was individual little stories. I think that's cool. Them little like chapters. I think that's really cool, but it stops you from really connecting to characters. Something that Modern Warfare does, um, Call of Duty, it makes you really love the characters that you play as. And um, with doing that, we've taken away that, that kind of character development in the Battlefield games. You're losing a bit of, of a connection to the story. And even though the stories are fantastic, and they really are fantastic if you haven't played them, they're amazing. You don't have that same connection as what you do when you're playing a mission with Captain Price or Ghost or someone like that. So um, I'd like to see a stronger story. I'd like to see something that's very um, character and story driven. Uh, but yeah, okay, I'll stop there. Any more news about Battlefield that comes out, I'm going to be reacting to it and talking to it with you guys, along with any other military game. Uh, we're expecting a Call of Duty coming out this year. Um, we're expecting it to be a Black Ops game, so obviously I'll react to anything that comes out about that as well. And if you like these reactions that are a little bit more chatty and a little bit more um, breaking down different things, then do let me know in the comments down below and I'll do more of them. So uh, before you all go, as per usual, my members, guys, thank you for being awesome. I love you all so much. If you want to become a member, there's a little join button next to the subscribe button down below. Definitely go and check that out. There's some awesome perks. Um, so yeah, thank you very much, everyone, for watching. If you did enjoy it, press the like button. If you didn't, press the dislike. And uh, leave a comment down below on what you see, want to see in the future. Take it easy, everyone. I love you all. Goodbye.